Welcome back to my channel. So in case you couldn't tell by the title, today we're reviewing all the Barbie movies except for the more recent modern ones. I'm going to save that for another video because I haven't actually watched them yet. So today is more of a video about the classic Barbie movies that I watched as a kid. We're going to look at the worst ones all the way to the best ones. And it was so difficult to rank these because I have a soft spot for literally all of them. But without further ado, let's get into it. The movie I've had to rank lowest on the list, which really pains me to do so because I really enjoyed it as a kid, is Barbie Thumbelina. That's coming in at number 17 on the list. So we meet this tiny girl and she lives with all these other Twillabies. Thumbelina and her two friends have the patch of wildflowers they're in uprooted and taken to the city because this spoilt girl called McKenna asked for the flowers to be taken to her room. The Twillabies learn of some terrible construction plan to tear down their entire home. To this day, I really do enjoy the environmental message behind this film and it has aged really well especially in the climate crisis we're in now wait did i mention that i'm dressed as barbie today <laughs> i just got completely sidetracked it's not an accident i did this intentionally i'm dressed up as the modern version of erica from the princess and the pauper so i actually think i did a pretty good job I also am really not a big fan of the new animation with the huge eyes and the tiny noses like they do in Frozen and Tangled. It really bugs me. No one is nice in this. They're all really whiny and whingy and irritating. And that includes all the characters, the main characters, the villains, the builders, the dog, everyone annoys me. It's a real shame because the original story of Thumbelina, the fairy tale, is so interesting. And they totally could have not just capitalized on that, but actually used the story and the characters. It followed this tiny girl who's raised by this woman who always wanted a child and then the girl is kidnapped by this frog who wants to marry her or I think is a toad. I also watched the Disney movie Thumbelina that was really cute and the next movie I want to talk about coming in at number 16 is Barbie Fairytopia and don't come at me this may surprise some of you it certainly surprised me because I loved the fairy movies as a kid but I realized one of the only reasons I'm so attached to this movie is because I have an unhealthy obsession with mythical creatures, fairies, mermaids, nymphs. So I do really like these kinds of movies because the aesthetic and the costumes are so cute and so interesting. I love that the fairies wear flower petals as dresses. It's really fashionable actually, like great Halloween costume idea. It's about this girl called Alina who finds that her flower home is sick and her fairy friends can't fly and she is a flightless fairy so she can actually help because she's not affected by the sickness and she summons the courage to embark on a journey to find Azura, a guardian fairy who she thinks can help solve the problem. And I love that element of the movie but everything else plot wise isn't great. It's just her walking and talking to someone and then walking somewhere else and talking to the next person and that's about it. It also is a little bit stereotypical using the formula of someone being the chosen one and being too insecure to believe it or think it's true and too much of the movie is the villain Laverna monologuing her plan which gets very boring after a while and what's strange too is we meet a mermaid called Nalu and there's a romantic setup between him and Alina he seems quite attracted to her but it doesn't go anywhere in the second movie and it's made very clear they're just friends so that's odd as well aesthetic wise my favorite part of the movie is that bluebell forest Alina walks into so stunning and the next one coming in at number 15 is Barb Barbie Princess Charm School. I was really hesitating putting it this low down because I had so many people on my community poll say how much they love this movie. Ah, I still really like it, but I'm not like addicted to it. I don't want to rewatch the movie. I'm not passionate about it in the same way I am as the others. <laughs> I know, I know, it's just, that's my opinion. So when I did my community post, a lot of you guys said you liked the whole concept of the movie, you liked the plot, I do too, but I don't know why it grabs people so much. It falls a little bit flat compared to the others. In general, anything modern, I'm not as interested in it. I like more period pieces and old fashioned stuff. So I already was a bit repelled by the flashy sparkles and the modernized outfits and the short skirts, the social media, it all gets a bit much. So I don't need to see it in a movie as well. <laughs> I've had so much of it, I'm like, please. Plot wise, it's pretty interesting. So it's about a teenager called Blair Willow 
Rose, who works as a waitress at a small cafeteria to support her sickly adoptive mother and her baby sister, Emily. Well, not a baby, but still, she's very young. And when she returns home, Blair is really shocked because she finds out that she's won a lottery for a scholarship to become a lady royal at the prestigious Princess Charm School. That's a huge opportunity. It's a magical academy where princesses from different kingdoms are educated. I was really excited because it reminded me of the Hunger Games or the Selection series. So I was really looking forward to see what cool stuff the girls would learn at the school. You have so much potential there. You could do so much with that. But instead, they spend most of the time being princessy, like balancing books on their heads and eating in a way that's nice and sophisticated. And that's about it ball dancing. It's really anticlimactic. I thought it would be so inventive. And there are a lot of tropes in this movie, stereotypes that make it less distinctive. Like you've got the love interest who's the most popular boy on campus. Obviously he has to be the most popular guy in the room. You have the girl who doesn't know she's a princess but is. The redemption arc of the mean girl, the ugly duckling idea. So it doesn't really bring anything new to the table. However, one of you guys made a really good point. You said, Princess Charm School is my favorite because the stakes felt higher than some of the other Barbie movies because the villain actually straight up committed murders. Good writing, good character development from Delancey, good outfits. And I totally respect respect that point. I think it's fair. The villain is really good. She's beautiful, first of all, so that's a nice change. She's just a textbook villain. She's not funny. She's not interesting. She's just mean. She confesses to killing Queen Isabella accidentally in front of everyone. Like she's getting really worked up and emotional, so she just spits it out. And then because of that, it makes it really easy to get her arrested and dragged away. And it's just very lazy writing. It's kind of obvious, like, whoops, I didn't mean to admit to it. Oh no. I guess I'm done with. And the main character is really sweet. I love that she's working so hard, but she's a bit dumb. She keeps having accidents and tripping into Delancey specifically, but it's just not that good. The writing isn't that good. The aesthetic is fine. It's bright and sparkly, but a bit basic. It doesn't have the charm of the older Barbie movies and the classic animation style. At the end, they have the costume transformation and all the girls have basically the exact same dress. And that is intentionally done, but I don't like it. I like it when the main character stands out. Their school outfits are genuinely nice, but they're wearing them for a lot of the movie and my whole life I've had to wear school uniforms as I'm sure you have. After a point you're just done with wearing them and seeing it in a movie as well is just exhausting. It really hurts your eyes. You're like please I just want to not look at a school uniform ever again. I don't think people need a reminder of their school experience so most people are like no please put them away. And coming in at number 14 is The Barbie Diaries which a lot of people like but for me what really brings it down is the animation style. It's really fuzzy and the quality is really bad. Barbie is portrayed as a typical American teenager who encounters the problems that real life teens often encounter, making new friends, dating, gossip. So it's kind of like a spin-off of Mean Girls. A lot of the characters are similar to the ones in Mean Girls. Actually, this might have been done before Mean Girls, I'm not sure. But either way, Mean Girls is a better movie, so I would just go and watch that. I wouldn't watch this. And it reminds me too much of Mean Girls as well, so I'm like, uh, it's not that unique. Also, the guy Barbie ends up with in the end isn't even that interesting a character, so that's why this is ranked lower on the list. And coming in at number 13 is Barbie Mariposa. This was one of my favorite Barbie movies as a kid. Mariposa is this shy, introverted fairy, and she makes friends with a prince called Carlos, and he sneaks into her house and tells her that the queen is dying from Ilios poisoning, and without her, the Flutterfield lights will go out, putting everyone in danger of the Skeezites, which like to eat fairies. So it's like a spin-off of Fairytopia. And Carlos hands Mariposa a map that will lead to the Ilios antidote. So Mariposa's got to go and look for the antidote with these two girls who were really mean to her but they have a redemption arc throughout the movie and their redemption arc is actually handled well. So plot wise the storyline only actually gets good when Mariposa and her friends are venturing outside of Flutterfield and along the way there's just a lot of filler like they meet this rabbit who's throwing stuff at them. Nothing really happens in this. Seriously even towards the end 
Does anything really happen? <laughs> Seriously. But the mermaids they meet in this are annoying and useless. The bunny rabbit, I wanted to die. The skeezites are just dumb and not threatening. And the final fight scene, the climax with the bad guy is lame. It's just the bad guy henna grabbing the magic flower like ha ha and flying away. And then Mariposa is like stop, give it back and grabs it back. And it's not that dramatic. That's the climax. And coming in at number 12 is Barbie, Fairytopia, Magic of the Rainbow, which is the third movie in the Fairytopia series. So one day a guardian of the kings comes to the fairy Alina's home and says to her that she has been selected as an apprentice of the guardian fairy and Alina accepts the invitation and decides to make a trip to the palace where she needs to learn to use her powers to perform the spring flight and the fairies must do this perfectly or otherwise there's this intense cold that seizes the kingdom for 10 years but unfortunately the evil Laverna is back and intends to freeze spring. She becomes their doppelganger and she looks exactly like them and infiltrates the palace and Alina suspects this but none of the other fairies believe her and it's so ridiculous that after everything they've gone through, after all the times Alina saved their asses in the past, they're not believing her now. That's really bad storytelling that doesn't make any sense. And also, if there's a security breach potentially, you would need to investigate that. That's really important. You may as well. Like, what have you got to lose? I don't know. And all the side characters are really unlikable and all just rude, excluding Alina when she arrives. And I really don't like her rainbow outfit at the end because it looks cheap and tacky. So that's my review. I do really like this movie but not as much as the others which again is why it's lower on the list. Coming in at number 11 is Barbie as the Island Princess. So it's about Ro who's marooned on a beautiful island and has been for years. She was washed up there as a child and one day an adventurous prince turns up and he takes her back to the real world with other humans and some of the plot points and key ideas aren't that original like her trying to fit into the new society the prince being pushed into doing stuff he's not comfortable with like an arranged marriage the main character is actually a lost princess and even though the love interest is okay he's really quite boring and not that distinctive and Ro was really jealous that he was going to marry someone else but there was no reason for her to be because they'd barely spoken so it wasn't that interesting and also it takes ages for everyone to convince Ro to go to this ball. They get her all dressed up. I really don't like the peacock dress, by the way. Oh my God. I love the idea of it. As a kid, I loved it. Like it's such a cool idea to be one with nature and have the peacock feathers. She has all these feathers at the top on the bodice. They should not be there. The feathers should only be like on the hem at the bottom of the skirt down, like here, waist down, and the top should be plain or something different, different texture, different everything. It was way too much. And the wings at the back, overkill. I don't like it. Somehow that color doesn't work for her. I think blue would look good in her, but it's almost too dark a blue. Everyone has to convince her to go to the ball and it's made into a huge deal, like go to the ball. And there's a whole song about it. And then she goes, she feels like she won't fit in or stuff's going wrong. And she's like, I shouldn't have come. And and then she leaves. Make up your mind, please. Basically, Ro doesn't actually go after what she wants, which is really infuriating in a main character. The island setting, aesthetic wise, was so gorgeous. Oh my God, I love it. But you never see much of it because she leaves straight away. Why would you waste that? Why would you have a whole movie set in some pretty boring castle when you could be there in this amazing island? I don't understand. And I also can't stand the elephant in this. She really drags this movie down. Why does she have eyelashes? She's animated kind of weird. Her personality is so off. She was used as a plot device to create conflict between Ro and her love interest, but it just makes her come across as jealous, petty, possessive. I really cannot stand this elephant. I wanted to murder her for most of the movie and that's that on that. And the next one on the list coming in at number 10 is Barbie Swan Lake. It's about this young girl called Odette who follows a beautiful unicorn into the enchanted forest and picks up a magic crystal that proclaims her destiny as a savior of the enchanted forest. And she's like, what? I'm a savior? This is crazy. It feels like she's unfit for the job. Have you noticed a pattern here? All the women are like, oh my god, I can't, please. I'm not that amazing. It's like, 
Yes, you are. Women putting themselves down. She sets out to leave the forest when the evil wizard Rothbart turns her into a swan because obviously he doesn't want anything getting in his way. This is really only ranked high for nostalgia reasons. I was bored at points with this movie. I think I must be missing something. I don't know how this happened. Everyone goes on and on about how like incredible this movie is. Please let me know in the comments what's so good about this movie because maybe I've just missed or overlooked something but I was a bit unengaged with it at times. The music is phenomenal to be fair. So one of you guys said Swan Lake is the best. All of the secondary characters in this movie were amazing even that annoying evil bird girl which is true. The secondary characters are really good. Every character in this is amazing and interesting. The animal children are the cutest things ever and another one of you said Swan Lake is supreme. Storytelling structure, costumes, music. It is true. Plot wise it kind of annoyed me how unprotected Odette is in the beginning of the movie. She is literally the savior of the forest. No one expected her to come along so she is a threat to Rothbart. She pulls the crystal out of the tree so clearly she's someone special so everyone should be on high alert protecting her but instead they just allow the unicorn to walk Odette back to her village and because of that negligence along the way Rothbart turns her into a swan. Where was the security? What happened? So that annoys me. And later Rothbart gets his daughter disguised as Odette and she goes to the ball to dance with the prince. And if he pledges his love to someone else like her, everything will go wrong. And Odette knows that. She just flies to each window to look in and slowly goes forwards like, and then obviously Rothbart sees her and shuts the windows one by one. And each time she goes to find another window and slowly moves towards it and then is disappointed when the window shuts. That's just silly. And a big part of the story and morals in the movie is that evil must be stopped with the power of love. And apparently it's Rapunzel, Rapunzel, the swan and the prince's love that saves everyone. But if that's one of the key messages the movie wanted to make, like true love saves all, fine, I agree. But the movie really needed to work on the romance more then because the romance, only seemed like an insignificant subplot that didn't matter. In fact, the prince only seemed to like her because she's attractive and because he wanted to get married to someone because his mum was pressurizing him. Read the room, Daniel, as well. Oh my God, he's inviting Odette to his party when it would seriously endanger her to be going to his party. Like, no one has time for your party, Daniel. No one's thinking about that right now. There are lots of beautifully animated parts of this movie and the village is really gorgeous. To be honest, the whole thing is stunning. The castle on the water is unreal. Even though I like all the characters in this, there are too many side characters as well. The swan dress is so breathtaking and I love the other more simple gowns she wears throughout the movie and the music here is completely incredible. So it is a really good movie. And number nine is Barbie and the Diamond Castle. I really liked this movie as a kid. The fairy tale story of Liana and Alexa, best friends who share everything, including their love of music. One day their lives change because they're given an enchanted mirror and there's a girl trapped inside. So they're trying to help her and to save her, they have to embark on a journey to the hidden diamond castle. The ending is satisfying and you do get a proper revolution, but it's almost too dragged out. The ending lasts for a long, long time and they meet these two twin boys along the way who try and help them. But what brings it down in the rankings quite a lot is the unnecessary extra stuff added into the plot. Like they meet these two dogs out of nowhere. There's not even a good reason for them to meet these dogs. That makes sense. They're just sort of there like, hey, some dogs, they're cute. And the dogs are kind of annoying. They serve no purpose. They're just there to look cute and sell merchandise. The twin boys were not necessary. You don't need them at all. The two girls in this, Liana and Alexa, have a really strong connection. I honestly think that Liana and Alexa should have ended up together. It's a well-known fact. They're perfect for each other. They own a freaking flower shop. Hello. It's quite funny as well because the boys seem quite invested in them, but the girls really don't seem that bothered with the boys. And the love interests are quite annoying and immature, quite douchey, but at least they have a personality and they're funny. One of you guys said, I don't really hate any love interest in particular, but I kind of think the twins are weird. I could never remember their names and there was a lack of information about them besides this weird encounter in the tavern with the lady. I know. So I felt it was odd that they were basically strangers trying to help the girls. I know. Why were they there? Not 
not needed. And I just can't like the dragon in this. He's the worst part of the movie. He's not a funny villain and he's not scary either. So if you're not either of those things, why are you here? And I really don't like the costumes at the end where they transform, they're too bright, they've got clashing colors, I'm not a fan. And coming in at number eight is Barbie A Christmas Carol. This movie is really good. It follows the story of Eden, a spoiled diva living in Victorian London who hates Christmas, but then everything changes. She's visited by three spirits who take her into the past, present, and future so she can get a different perspective on her own behavior and change. It's so cool to see Barbie being not a nice person and having to grow. Anything Christmas themed I'm going to enjoy. Anything based off a Christmas carol is bound to be good. So it's a really solid movie, but I'm not sure I like the characters enough to rank this higher, especially the secondary characters. So coming in at number seven, Seven is Barbie as Rapunzel. The movie has some serious missed opportunities and it's way too slow paced for me to rank it higher, even though I adore this movie. So Barbie is an artist who finds this magic paintbrush and paints her way out of a castle to save her prince. She's trapped in a tower with a bunch of animal friends and when she does get out, Mother Gothel gets really angry at her and has kidnapped her, but she doesn't know that straight away. And I, oh my God, the intro to this movie is phenomenal. The way the camera rushes through the forest and it's got all the thorny trees and Mother Gothel on her horse and the secret portal, like it's so good, the music, everything, it's incredible. So now let's talk about the plot. There are too many animal companions here with too much screen time rather than Rapunzel interacting with actual human characters. And especially when you introduce those little kids as well. Kids in movies, I can't. Even in animated ones actually, they're just annoying. They don't contribute anything. They're not useful to the plot. The story starts with Rapunzel already not trusting Mother Gothel and being really scared of her. And that's such a wasted opportunity right there. You know as well that Mother Gothel is mean. She's not multifaceted, she's just mean. She's practically making Rapunzel her slave, making her do all these tasks for her. She doesn't even pretend to be nice to Rapunzel or mother-like. The magic paintbrush isn't utilized enough. It's such an incredible idea, but it's introduced way too late in the movie. Why discover a tunnel and go through the tunnel when you could just paint your way out and find that paintbrush earlier? I don't know. It's weird. So it's a little anticlimactic too, like Rapunzel finds a way out of the tower, looks at stuff in the village, just walks around. Then a kid almost falls into a hole and gets impaled. So she saves the kid before that happens. And then she goes home. The structure is repetitive. Like the first time she went out, Mother Gothel came into her room and got mad at her and was like, don't do that again. And tell me the name of the boy you're seeing and na na na. And then the second time, it's the same thing. She comes back, Mother Gothel gets angry at her. Who's this boy you're seeing? This could ruin everything. And the stakes should feel really high and the conflict should be there because it's about her being locked in this tower and trying to escape. But somehow it doesn't feel that dangerous or risky. Aesthetic wise, it's really pretty, especially the castle at the end on the water. It's my favorite castle in any Barbie movie. It's incredible, I love it. And now onto the characters. Otto is iconic in this and brings a comedic touch. He's talking about the rabbit and he says, give him to me. And he makes this moaning sound. And I thought it was just me that noticed it until I looked it up and realized that it was going viral on TikTok recently, ironically, of him making moaning sounds the whole movie. I don't know why he's doing that. It's a kid's movie. Give him to me. Uh, I'll leave you. The way he pronounces village when he gets his head stuck in a vase makes the movie so good. I love his obsession with the rabbit. It's really hilarious. I love the rabbit. However, I have to say at the beginning of the movie, what the rabbit brings to the table is that he's got really good hearing. So he could hear Mother Gothel on her horse and he says to Rapunzel, oh my God, watch out, Mother Gothel's coming. And I was like, wow, cool character trait. Like that's gonna help Rapunzel. But then by the middle of the film, suddenly he's completely lost his ability to have good hearing. It just went down the drain before he could hear stuff coming from a mile away. But halfway through the movie, he'll be talking to Rapunzel and he'll say, Mother Gothel, turn around. And Mother Gothel will be right there in the doorway. So suddenly he can't hear her approaching or getting closer. So that's a bit inconsistent. The love interest is really nice, but very boring. What bugs me is that this is a movie about freedom and independence. And for once, 
being yourself. Rapunzel isn't single, like as soon as she escapes she immediately meets the prince and falls in love. She doesn't need to focus on a relationship right now, it feels forced into the plot and not everyone needs to end up with someone at the end of a movie. There could be a lot of chemistry between Rapunzel and the prince, but yet a lot of their scenes are just them staring at each other and smiling which becomes a little bit awkward and forced. I want them to actually have a conversation. In terms of the costumes I really love them, I love the pink dress Rapunzel wears at the beginning. So overall despite the fact that Rapunzel is too slow paced it actually makes me emotional seeing Rapunzel wanting freedom and even her friend the purple dragon really grew on me by the end. Whereas in Pegasus for example, the magic of Pegasus, I'm not attached really to any of the side characters but I am in this. Moving on, coming in at number six is Barbie and the Three Musketeers. This was one of my favorite Barbie movies as a kid. Oh my god I was obsessed with it, I loved it. I know it's not as classic or iconic as Swan Lake perhaps but I will always prioritize not being kind of bored and with this movie it's pacey and I'm never bored. So it's about Corinne, a 17 year old girl who dreams of becoming a musketeer like her dad and her kitten dreams of becoming a muscatier. By the way, just cut that kitten out of the film, not needed but whatever. Unfortunately when they make it to Paris becoming a musketeer is not easy for Corinne, she's faced with a lot of sexism and someone's trying to assassinate the prince as well so she ends up working in the palace with three other girls who also dream of becoming musketeers coincidentally. So let's start with the characters. The villain is fine but he's a little predictable and not as good as some of the other Barbie villains but he does make up for it with a line at the end that I find so funny. He is about to be arrested and put in jail for trying to kill his nephew, the prince, and the prince is like, okay, off you go. And then for some reason, the villain does this really weird face and voice and says, does this mean I won't be invited to your birthday party next year? I think he was being sarcastic, but honestly, 10 out of 10, amazing. Some of the characters' lines in particular, the dialogue with the four main girls can be very cringy and over the top compared to the other Barbie movies and I don't mind the main character Corinne having a love interest, the prince, but he's not necessary first of all because at the end she rides off into the sunset with her friends so clearly romance isn't really a priority for her so you could just cut that whole romance out and have her be a strong independent woman but also he's not even a good love interest so when they meet he seems super cute and adorable and wholesome but then he goes on and on about how his biggest dream is to become a musketeer and how he's always wanted wait he doesn't want to be a musketeer what am I talking about no he wants to be like a scientist or something or an engineer but basically no one else really supports that except for him and his own dreams and she's like wow that's so amazing well I want to be a musketeer and then he laughs at her and says girls can't be musketeers like what do you mean and makes a sexist comment which he never properly apologizes for and she's annoyed as well like it hurt her feelings so that was completely uncalled for. As for Corinne as a main character I really like her she's feisty she's hot-headed she feels like a real human being I like that she's got flaws she starts out so naive and optimistic and then is hit with the hard reality of life and the truth about sexism and how she can't just say her dreams all the time because people will judge her for it. So I felt bad for her, I could resonate with her and I really liked her. My favourite part of the movie is the healthy feminist message. I love it, it was so empowering for me as a kid. The reason why I'm so fond of this movie is because it made me realize almost what female empowerment is. The girls are happy to be feminine in the traditional sense that they put makeup on and they like sparkly dresses but they're also really brave and they're fighters and they're strong and confident and coming in at number five is Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus. So we're in my top five now. Plot wise it's not as good as I remembered it as a kid. When I was a kid I thought it was flawless and iconic and now I see very obvious, very very obvious issues with it but I like it because it's pacey and I will always prioritize being entertained. I can't stand being bored when I'm watching a movie I will just click off. I'm sure you're the same with YouTube videos like if you're getting bored you're not engaged you're just gonna click off. I'm done. <laughs> Bye. So it's very important for me that I actually enjoy what I'm watching and that's where the magic of Pegasus delivers, though it has many many flaws, it's super engaging. It's about Princess Arnica who becomes friends with this winged horse, a Pegasus that flies her to this cloud kingdom and the reason this happens is because this creepy wedlock guy, he's this villain who rides on this awesome eagle villain sidekick, approaches Arnica and says that she needs to marry him and when she says no he turns 
basically the whole village to ice or stone. So she's panicked and doesn't know what to do and she only has a few days to break this curse. And luckily the Pegasus comes along in time to rescue her. And she later finds out that this Pegasus is her sister because her sister was turned into a Pegasus by the wedlock guy because he'd also tried to propose to her and marry her because he's a freak. My biggest issue with this movie is that I don't really give a shit about a lot of the characters. I don't care about the parents getting turned to stone. I don't know anything about the villagers, so I have no attachment to them. I don't like the sister. The parents are comedically overprotective, not in a good way. They're just very one dimensional, protective parents. I really don't care about the whole wand of light and trying to make the wand of light by learning about love and kindness and sacrifice, and that's what unlocks the wand of light or whatever the messages are behind it. I didn't care about that. I don't care about those children we meet in the Cloud Kingdom and the whole Cloud Kingdom storyline I found a little dull. I don't care about the whole Lost Sister storyline. Now with the characters, I really hate Shiver the Bear Cub. She's an animal companion, but she's annoying and she's not helpful. I only like the animal companions if they actually offer something. She doesn't even offer comedic value used to inconvenience the other characters in order to make stuff happen with the plot and let it progress. There are multiple scenes of her almost killing the main characters or giving away their plan or ruining their life, getting into trouble. And her obsession with Aiden was just plain weird, considering she's a childlike bear cub. Now, the villain is hilarious, so that's why I like him. He's so funny, everything he says is sassy, he has the best one-liners, but he is too disgusting around women for it to be okay for a kid's movie. He's just gross, he's got these multiple wives at his house that are like his slaves. It's really disgusting. He's just an all round awful person. He's a bit too mean and predatory when it comes to women. I wouldn't feel comfortable showing it to my kids if they were really young. What really brings the movie up in the rankings is the love interest, Aiden. He's actually got a backstory, which often we don't get with the love interest. He's compelling, he's funny. He's got a really cool banter, enemies to lovers thing going on with Annika that I really love. Annika as a main character as well actually delivers. She's sassy, she's funny, she's adventurous, I love it. And in terms of the costumes, the outfits are really nice. Coming in at number four is Mermaidia. This is the second movie in the Fairytopia series. It follows shortly after the events of the previous movie, focusing on the fairy Alina, who now has actually got some wings, which is so exciting. And she gets to know this mermaid called Nori, who's a real cow, trying to attempt to rescue Nalu, the mermaid we met in the last movie, who had gotten kidnapped by Laverna, which is a really compelling plot line because I actually like Nalu and I want him to be safe, so I care immediately. The aesthetic is unreal beautiful, stunning. I'm completely obsessed with it. The characters are fun. I like the animal sidekicks and the minor characters that pop up. I would make the main character, Alina, stay a mermaid. At the end, she gets the easy way out, but I would have loved it if she was faced with the harsh reality of life and it didn't work out. She didn't get to keep her wings and she was unfortunately stuck as a mermaid and she had to adjust to a new life as a mermaid. First of all, that would have made for an amazing sequel after that for an upcoming movie, seeing her adjust to her life. Also, the mermaid world is really interesting, but also giving her what she wants so easily at the end, just handing it to her on a silver platter is a bit much, I think. The traps set up in this dangerous world where they're adventuring from location to location sometimes are kind of lame. They're not that good. For instance, the girls are grabbed by seaweed that tries to wrap them up really tight, but it's very easy for the girls to pull away from the seaweed weed and swim away. But I will say that the aesthetic in this movie is one of my favorites out of all the movies. I love how you're never bored because it alternates from different locations. You've got this beautiful tropical lagoon, areas filled with coral, green, blue, so it's not too much pink, it's easy on the eyes. And now let's talk about the characters. Bibble is a very cute sidekick or companion, and he actually does stuff for the plot, like he helps. He's not an inconvenience, he does his best to help Nalu escape, so it feels like he's useful and he's needed. The reason this movie isn't ranked higher is because of Nori's character. Character. I know loads of people that love her and I don't understand why. Please let me know why you like her character, but I don't. I don't think it's ever called for or acceptable for a woman to be mean to another woman, nasty just because they're jealous of that woman. I don't know why that's become so romanticized in movies. She gets this redemption arc at the end, but realistically, Girls like that don't get a redemption arc. They don't suddenly become down to earth and humble. It was very rushed. 
and with Nori she changes basically overnight and becomes this kind person. I'm so sick of girls against girls in movies so it really brings down the quality of the movie. Nori is rewarded for her bad behavior. She sees Nalu and he really seems to like her back and be attracted to her so she gets her happy ending which she shouldn't have. I'm sorry but Nalu is a cool character. He just wouldn't be interested in a girl like Nori. They're not on the same level. I couldn't sympathize with Nori either or feel bad for her because it's unrequited love and she doesn't think Nalu likes her back. She was so obnoxious and immature at the beginning. They shouldn't have redeemed her at all in my opinion. The bad guys in this are really dumb and I know some people don't like them but I really love them. I think they're hilarious. Top three now. Oh my god so exciting. So coming in at number three is Barbie and the 12 Dancing Princesses. God, I love this movie so much more than I thought I would. Oh my God, like I'm obsessed with it. It is incredible and so underrated. Dude, this movie needs more recognition. Wow, what a movie. So I only watched it like once as a kid and I wish I'd watched it more because it is incredible. So it follows Barbie as Princess Genevieve and her 11 dancing princess sisters and they discover a secret entrance in their bedroom which leads to this magical world which is so beautiful where they can have this escapism from their day-to-day -day life and dance all night and wear out their shoes. Isn't that like the most romantic amazing thing? That is every child or teenager's dream. Like even now I'm like oh my god I wish that could happen to me. There's something so fantasy like and incredible about discovering the secret world in your bedroom where you can dance all night. And the music in this is incredible. Oh my god maybe my second favorite out of all the Barbie movies it's amazing. And their father is in danger of losing his kingdom because his cousin comes to stay and she's actually poisoning the king and treating the girls really badly and sucking the fun out of everything. Let's talk about the plot. The villain was so cool. She was so evil and nasty. Again very beautiful but cruel. Carrying through with her plans as well. She was actually getting shit done. She would have been happy for the girls to stay trapped in the secret world forever. She literally smashed the floor and broke it so they wouldn't be able to get out. That is badass and hardcore and I like her. But she's so mean it's almost taken a bit too far. Each scene she's in is stressful. That's why I adore characters like Conrad in Revenge, the TV show, because he's so charismatic and so much fun. He's charming, he's cocky. Whereas with this lady, she's a bit too negative. What I love about the plot in this movie though is that the twists and turns are genuinely clever and shocking at points. Like wow, I didn't expect that. They're really edgy. And even at the end when the girls fight the palace guards, they all utilize their unique skills to take down the guards. It's so badass, I adore it. With the characters, there are 12 girls, but yet I feel like I know and understand them all, which is really an accomplishment. Derek the love interest is so cute! Oh my god, what an angel! Like He just goes above and beyond to help her when she needs him to do something for her. He is on it. He is doing it. Such a cutie pie and such a little munchkin. He is so loyal to her and I love how he just seems so besotted with her. It's really cute. So he puts so much effort into the shoes he makes her and then his determination to find out what the villain is hiding because Genevieve asked him to. And they're trapped in the secret realm. He manages to figure out there is one and get in there just to find her and help her. It's so cute. I don't like that the movie ended with a flash forward to their wedding. In the modern society we're in now, especially now like as a modern viewer, for many couples marriage doesn't mean happiness or the end goal to be honest. It really isn't. Like marriage is not everything. One of you guys actually had a really insightful comment. You said, my fave is Derek from the 12 Dancing Princesses. He clearly was in love with Genevieve. He would spend extra time making special shoes for her or really pay attention to her random dances only to save her and her sisters later. And exactly because he was paying attention to every little thing she did like watching her do her dance hopping from stone to stone. He remembered the exact sequence and could use it to get into the secret realm because he was so besotted with her. So he actually noticed that stuff. So I love it. It tied together perfectly. Number two is Barbie and the Nutcracker. I 
I love it. I watched it recently. It made me cry. I was like, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's the first Barbie movie too, and it's really good for a first movie. So Barbie plays Clara, a beautiful main character who receives a nutcracker for Christmas. And it turns out her nutcracker is alive and in search of the sugar plum princess. And she wants to join in on that adventure. Well, she kind of has to because she's been shrunk really tiny by the mouse king, the rat king. In order to get back to her normal height, she has to get the sugar plum princess to help her. They go through gingerbread villages, they battle the mouse king's army, and at the end, Clara realizes that she is the sugar plum princess, and the nutcracker is the missing Prince Eric everyone talks about. I like the dance sequences in this because they're not too dragged out and they're actually fun, and the romance is probably one of my favorite parts of this movie. The animation makes their facial expressions weird, so they're meant to be gazing into each other's eyes, but it's not quite conveyed properly with their facial expressions, how they're feeling, but that's not really the fault of the characters, it's just the animation. This was the first Barbie movie I ever watched as a kid, which is one of the reasons I love it so much, because I remember watching it for the first time. Also, I have an obsession with Christmas movies. I'm really attached to Christmas for some reason, like it makes me really emotional, so in a movie, sign me up, I love it. Clara dances with the prince in this magical kingdom, and he turns back into a man, obviously, and she's like, oh my god, you're so cute, and they dance. The mouse king, the rat king, I think rips off her necklace or something, which means she's transported back to the real world and she suddenly wakes up and the nutcracker toy is gone and she's her full height again. So you have this crushing sense of disappointment and it doesn't matter how many times I watch this because I keep forgetting so I feel the same way each time where you're like, oh my god, that's so disappointing. The whole thing was a dream. Like, that sucks, you know? It was so romantic and he doesn't even exist. Her family comes in to talk to her and suddenly they say that there's this guy they want her to meet. He's like a family friend. And you're like, oh, okay. And the door opens and it's freaking Prince Eric, but he's dressed to fit the sort of Victorian attire. And you're like, that's weird. What is going on? Like, is this some sort of alternative universe? And he walks in. You can tell he knows exactly who she is and he lived through that whole adventure sequence as well with the whole fairy tale kingdom. You don't know how on earth it happened because it was a dream, but he had the same dream somehow. Like it was real. It's so freaking cute. Something about it every time just gets me. Like it's so romantic and they dance together and I love it. I honestly think there is nothing better to hit you right in the feels than a Christmas romance. To be fair, a lot of this is coming from nostalgia too. Like I just remember watching it as a kid and loving the aesthetic and the setting and the characters. So it's really, really good. The obstacles they encounter along the way make sense. They're not forced. They feel logical and like it should happen and it's realistic. Throughout this whole movie, there are so many clever tricks and twists and turns. It's genuinely like good, I'll forget about it and be shocked each time it just delivers. When they see the castle in the distance, they're like, hey, let's go to the castle. And they go in, they open the front door and walk in. And suddenly you realize, the castle is a freaking life-size cardboard cutout. It falls forward like that, and there's no castle at all. It's just an empty field, and then they're trapped in this box because the Rat King invades, so it was all a setup. Like, smart? Jeez, really inventive. The villain, the Rat King, is funny, sassy, mean, intimidating, all at the same time. I love him. The costumes are beautiful and breathtaking. I completely adore them. My only issue with this movie, my only issue, is that Major Mint, is rude, negative, and sexist throughout the movie, but he doesn't get consequences and punishment at the end. And coming in at number one, I had to make it number one. I just had to. I think I only saw it once. I didn't see it much as a kid for some reason. I didn't really know it was out there, but it has to come in at number one because in terms of storytelling and plot, it is the bomb. It is incredible. And that is Princess and the Pauper. This is a masterpiece. It's about two girls living in the same village area and they're identical but they don't know it and they're living very different lives. One of them is royalty and the other one is very poor. They meet each other and then Princess Annalise is captured and so the pauper has to take her place and pretend to be her for a while until they can get the real princess back. All of the events in this actually make sense. The storylines make sense. 
it actually feels logical and like, wow, this, this works. There's this guy called King Dominic who falls in love with Erica, mistaking her for Annalise. So there's that mix up there. I fell in love with this movie. Oh my God, it's so freaking good. I had so many comments saying, Princess and the Pauper is amazing. It's the only answer. The music is next level. And yes, the music is insane. It's so good. I could hear it in Broadway or the West End and I wouldn't be surprised. It's so cool. It doesn't rely on magic to have a good plot. Even the minor characters like the horse and the cats are all incredible, like well-rounded, fun, sassy, interesting characters. Preminger is the best Barbie villain because he's creepy, greedy, and cruel, but incredibly sassy, hilarious, and fun. He's not just a cardboard cutout. Yes, he's evil, but he's got different sides to him too. He's a human being, I love it. Annalise, the princess, is into science, which I love, oh my God. It really sucks that she was going to be married off to someone she didn't know. However, my only issue was that her situation wasn't half as dire as Erica's. She wasn't struggling to get by and get food on the table for one. So you can't really compare their two situations at all. Um, so I have a lot more sympathy for Erica as a character. There are many romances in this, like three, and all of them are insane, top notch. They managed to make all of them really good considering they don't get loads of screen time. Julian and Annalise as a couple, they just mesh so well together, it's beautiful. The romance, honestly, between the two cats is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I want a romance just like that it was so adorable finally i'm just going to talk about my top three something so top three aesthetics love interests whatever so we're going to start off with settings number one has to be swan lake it's just too freaking beautiful number two mermaidia and number three, Princess and the Pauper. Next one, the best castles. Number one, the Beach Castle in Rapunzel. Number two, the Princess and the Pauper Castle. And number three, the one in Swan Lake. Love and Tress, doing it in order? <sighs> I don't think I can, but I will say, I love Aiden from The Magic of Pegasus because he's like a real human being. I love Eric from The Nutcracker and Derek from The 12 Dancing Princesses. One of you guys said that your least favorite love and Tress are the ones that we know the least about, like the one from Rapunzel or the one from Swan Lake. And Jessica said the best love interest is Aiden. He starts out as this sarcastic, witty pain in the butt, and then you realize that underneath his hard exterior, he has a heart of gold. He actually has an arc in that he wants to become a better person and make amends to his father. His story doesn't just revolve around Arnica, and it makes the couple one of the best in the Barbie movies. Worst, I want to say The King from Musketeers, but I talked about that movie last time, so I have to say Daniel from Swan Lake. For one thing, he looks just like Stefan from Rapunzel. For another thing, he's an idiot for not realizing that Odette can't be at his ball because it's still daylight. Plus, he doesn't do much in terms of helping fix any of the problems. So I just have some final points in terms of analysis about the Barbie movies. The first thing I want to say is there's a lot of stuff that can go under the radar when you're a kid and that can be programmed into your subconscious and you may not realize it's happening. For instance, a lot of the Barbie villains have quite big noses or hooked noses, which actually can perpetuate a really harmful stereotype about Jewish people in particular. This is really important to note. There is a lack of diversity, especially in the earlier Barbie movies. There's just a lot of white people and blonde, blue-eyed people. When I was a kid, I felt very, I guess, seen and represented. I could relate to Barbie and I saw myself in her and I was like, oh, she looks like me. And of course, because we both look similar, you know, we're both skinny, we've both got blue eyes, we've both got, my hair used to be blonde, but the point is, we're, we're similar. But many people, most people don't look like her and they can't then be like, oh, I, I, I resemble her, you know? And it's especially bad when on top of that, you add that there are only straight couples, girls falling in love with boys. Even when, to be honest, those romances were forced or didn't make any sense and the girls would have been better off as a couple. Overall, I'm so glad I did this video because I love Barbie movies. I'm so fond of them. They have such a special place in my heart. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on my rankings. So make sure you subscribe and click all and then all notifications, super important. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't actually notify you for everything. Also follow me on Instagram if you want more behind the scenes stuff. So thank you so much for watching this video. Share it with your friends and I will see you for my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>